Hello everyone! Today's video is about the brand new Taurus G3 based on the very popular G2. This one is a 4 inch barrel, the equivalent of the Glock 19 9mm. Here is a Glock 17. This is a 4 inch barrel. It comes in a very simple box and in this box you have the gun and two magazines. One 15 round flush with the gun and one 17 round who comes with an insert to make it also flush with the gun. And if you want more magazines you can go with the tourist magazine or with the SIG P226 that fits, works perfectly on the G3. It will also lock back the slide on the last round. The magazines come with the yellow follower, works perfectly. You have some notches in the back, the 15 rounds will show you every round up to 15, the 17 rounds will show you every round in the magazine up to 17. On the other hand, the P226 magazine will only show you every 5 rounds up to 18. The gun, as I mentioned before, come in the case with only those parts, no cleaning rods, no anything, no manuals. If you are looking for the manual, which I suggest you take a look at, it might be under Taurus G3 on the internet, but as it is a very comparable gun as the G2, you will be able to find the G2 manual for everything you need for the G3. Now let's take a closer look at the G3. As I mentioned it before, it is just a longer version of the G2. There are a few differences. One of the different features with the G2 is the serial number that is engraved onto the working mechanism, not on the frame. And that gives the opportunity to Taurus, if they want to seize it, to offer different lowers. Wider, maybe different colors. The other difference with the G2 is the trigger. The trigger is wider on the little dinghy there. I don't know if that makes any differences. I never handled a G2. And the third difference is the rear sight. On the G2 is fully adjustable. Not only side to side, but also elevation. This one is only for side to side. So let's talk about the gun. First, the magazine. And we already covered that with the possibility to use the CP226 as an extra magazine. The way to find out if a magazine adjusts correctly is to have the slide open, not closed, there is no point. Always open, as this is the time you need to eject the magazine. And the ejection is very positive, even with the SIG. As you can see, the slide release is very smooth. Some guns are a lot harder than that, and this is very good for the gun. Let's move up to the grip. Very grippy, but does not hurt. So when you shoot, the gun stays in your hand. The magazine eject is right there. I do have small hands, and I do not have to switch my hand to eject the magazine. So that gun is perfect for small hands, medium hands, larger hands. I will suggest you handle the gun to see if you like it, if it fits your hand. The grip reminds me of many other guns. Very grippy, but does not hurt the hand, even when you squeeze it very hard, which you should do when you do a two-hand hold on the gun. The magazine eject is good. But, if you intend to reverse the magazine eject or to remove it for cleaning, I will suggest you deal with it very little. 
In the past, the G2 had a very serious issue with the magazine eject. There is a little protrusion on the magazine eject, which go into a rail and bottom out the ejector. The opening was plastic and after a while, the nipple was wearing out the plastic. So rightfully, Taurus corrected that and in this gun you have a metal insert or rail. But the metal is soft. As I will show you on the next video next weekend, it is dent that soft metal. So the magazine eject will work great, but if you mess with it too much, it will create a wear on the rail. And that will have some serious consequences. So the less you mess with the magazine eject, the better the gun will work. Let's talk about the trigger. And that is the part that really interested me with this gun. Usually, with the striker fire, when you load around, it will cock the firing pin. And so you have a single action gun with a very nice trigger. This one has a little bit of play, but it's okay. A wall, but no prettiness. It's very smooth. And at the wall, it will be firing. The reset is short. Not as short as some other gun, but very, very sufficient for a defensive handgun. And then again. Now, if by any chance your round did not go off and you have a pretty hard primer, then this gun gives you the possibility of a second strike. Now, instead of a play like we had before, which is nothing, let's go over it, see? Nothing. Now, you can fill a wall right at the beginning of the trigger. This trigger is going to cock your firing spin, like a hammer fire gun. And then fire again. This weekend I took the gun to the range to test it. And I knew some of the primer I was using were pretty hard. And indeed, on the first strike, nothing happened. So I did a restrike and it did fire the round. So it is working to the intended purposes. Some people tell you not to do a restrike in case the bullet does not go off on the second strike. They rather tell you to do a slap and slide to chamber on your round. And indeed, this is wise. But I have been using hammer fire for a very long time and I usually do a second strike before I do a slap and slide on the gun. Not only the trigger will allow you to do a second strike, but I see another opportunity is when you train. Let's take a single action only handgun like this CZP10. If you want to train at home, dry fire it, you have to move the slide to be able to pull the trigger and then you are done. If you want to move to another target, you have to move the slide and shoot again. Now the Taurus offers you something totally new, is you shoot at your first target and then you can shoot at the next target and again and again and again and again and again like a hammer fire gun. So you can get used to the trigger while dry firing, you can get used to and create muscle memory on your hand and finger trigger, but also and people don't think of it, but those muscles get developed as you pull the trigger. So I take it as a competitive shooter, as a very, very great value for this handgun. Let's move up. You have a small recess area for your thumb. Okay, fine. Another one for your other thumb. Okay, fine. Another recess for your finger, fine, but I mean, that's not necessary, but there are little pluses. You also have a rail for anything you want to put in. And then you have the safety here. Some people do not like it, but you do not have to use it. But it is there if you want to console carry that gun or have it at home and nobody can pull the trigger until the safety is released.
and then you pull the trigger. We went over the magazine release, very soft, very efficient. Let's move on to the slide with rear serrations and front serration if you use those. The sides, they were really, really well adjusted at the factory. It was dead on for me at the range. They are metal, three dots as you can see. The rear side can be adjusted for windage. You need a small Allen wrench. And the front side can be easily removed with an Allen wrench on the bottom of the slide. Let's take it apart. To remove the slide, you pull the slide rearwise a little bit. And then this tab here on each side, you have to pull them back and let go of the slide. As you can see, it's slightly off track. Pull the trigger and now move the slide out. Inside you have a dual capture spring. It's working fine. Then you have the barrel. The barrel was already showing somewhere from the factory, but you have to know that they do try the gun at the factory. And that's how they set your sights ready to go. I had no failure to feed, no failure to eject, no failure whatsoever during my about 400 rounds at the range. The inside of the slide is typical of the Tracker Fire handgun. You have the firing pin, we have the firing pin safety here, but all this will be explained into one of my video in a couple of weeks. We're going to detail cleaning, detail take it apart, except for the sides. Then for the inside of the lower frame, you have your safety, you have your magazine release. All this can be removed with a few pins, which you will need are roll pin pins. I will give you a link below where to get those punches, those special punches with a roll pin. I will also give you a link to a cleaning kit as a lot of buyers for this G3 are new into the handgun family. For you guys, you will need a cleaning kit to take care of your handgun and I will leave a link below. On the next video, as I said, I will show you how to remove everything if you want to remove those components, which you will need to know anyway. Not only after a few range trips, you will need to clean up the inside of your gun, but after maybe six, 700 rounds, you will need to remove all those parts to do a very thorough clean on the lower frame and on the slide as well. So I will show you all this in details. But the inside is typical of a striker fire hanging. Nothing special. You have the rail up front, the rail in the back. And to reinstall the gun is also very typical to all those guns. Now let's talk about the reinstallation of the upper onto the lower. Sometime, if the gun is brand new, and you can see here, you have some play. If you do find it is hard to bring the slide back, first make sure it is centered, but then lower that part right here. And this, you can do it with your finger too, will allow you to bring the slide back. One more thing is this gun is not intended for lefties. You don't have a slide release on this side nor a safety, but you can reverse the magazine release if needed. Now, what do I think about this gun? Well, first the price. The street value is about 250 bucks, more or less. And just for that, this is a great entry level handgun. This is a great truck gun. Remember, you can only put a gun in your truck or in your car that you don't mind losing. If someone breaks in it and steals your gun, which we don't want to, you don't want to have an expensive handgun in it. So this is the perfect handgun for the truck or the car. Other than that, what I do not like about this gun is the magazine release. Do not mess with it. If you want to take it apart, 
and to put it back. As I say, check my video and I will show you what's wrong with the wear of the rail. So if you do it, do it once or twice and leave it alone. That is a bad point, but it's not major because some people will never, never take it out. Another problem with this gun is it does not come with different panels for small hands, big hands. It's a handgun that should fit everybody. Is it a big deal? Not for me, because that gun fits perfectly. Now, what is good about that gun? Well, we talked about the price. Awesome. This gun also, I didn't say it before, is very accurate. But again, nowadays, no gun is not accurate. With the way handguns are manufactured, all barrels are good. And then after market, you can have some very good. But usually, they are perfect handguns that will be more accurate that you can be accurate with. The double strike capability is the big selling point for me as a hammer fire handgun lover. And so if I have to choose a striker fire handgun with the same feature, this is the only one. So this is a very good feature for me. And then another one is right off the bat, you don't have to hunt for magazine. The SIG P226 magazine is there for you. There are plenty out there and they work great. The only issue is they are ugly. But for a second magazine, you carry on the pouch and you use as a backup. Those magazines are perfect. And then we have done the all around review on this Taurus G3. So is it a good buy? Oh, absolutely. You should jump on this opportunity. For the price, you cannot go wrong. Well, until next time, see you guys.